everyone, Uncle Jesse here. As you might know, I print and sell a good number of different things that I've run off and 3D printed and shown in videos here on YouTube or on my other social media accounts, and they're all primarily printed on the Elgu Neptune 2 series of 3D printers. Ranging from articulating dragons from Magai Beer to headpieces that you've seen worn by mischievous gods created by Nico Industries and other amazing articulating files created by Hex 3D. And the problem that I'm having is that all of these machines are just kind of scattered all over the place and not really centrally located. So what we're gonna be doing today is setting up my own home 3D print farm so that we can actually manage these all in one location. And the goal is for me to be able to show you how I'm gonna set up my own home 3D 3D print farm to better manage all of these 3D printers. So before we jump into this, I need to share with you my dirty little secret about making videos here for you all. And that's something that I'm gonna be very ashamed to show you. And that is right to the side of where I normally record is a storage rack that used to house all of my different 3D printers or a good number of my 3D printers. And now it's just sort of a catch-all for different projects that I've done over the last year plus, and it's just an absolute disaster. So what I need to do before we can move forward is actually work on getting this all cleaned up. So let's jump right into that. What's great about this project is that it's finally forcing me to clean up this mess of 3D prints, failed projects, and random 3D printer parts that have been laying around here for quite a while now. Once that shelf was cleaned up, I did a quick test fit and the top shelf is just a little too low, so I'll need to move the shelf up slightly unless I want to change how the filament is held. But before I can do that, I need to clean off this top shelf and all of these print projects, including some awesome prints that I forgot I still had laying around. I also have my original Elgu Saturn sitting up here. This is one of the early units prior to it coming out with the mono screen display and the side loading USB. Thankfully, adjusting the shelves is super simple and all you need is a mallet or you can use your fist like I'm doing here and adjust each of the positions for the shelves as desired. Just make sure they're properly aligned. I also realized while cleaning up the mess here that I was missing the cross support beams, which I'll for sure need to help stabilize and support my 3D printers. I also like to lay down these foam floor tiles down underneath my 3D printers on the shelves that help reduce the sound and vibrations. Now that I've got the top cleaned off and the middle rack cleaned off and everything's re-spaced out so I can comfortably sit printers on the top shelf and the bottom shelf with the spool still mounted on the top, not having to side mount them. That leaves this bottom shelf here that I'm currently using for filament storage. I'm just gonna clean this up and continue to use it for filament storage because I really don't have a better option currently for all the filament that I have. And for anyone interested, the shelving units that I'm using are ones that I picked up from Costco many, many years ago. They're just heavy duty storage shelves. And I picked these up for about $130, again, pricing from a handful of years ago. These are six feet long by six feet tall, two feet deep. They come with four shelves. I've only ended up using three of those anytime I've used these just because I typically have printers scattered across them. And unfortunately, the price of these has gone up drastically over the past few years. Even Costco now sells these for about $230. Lowe's Home Depot, it's gonna set you back about 300 plus dollars for this same size unit. However, you can find cheaper ones here in different materials or different quality or in just different sizes. And I also went ahead and tested out to see if I could actually fit four of the Neptune 2 side by side on the shelf unit and I can, it's a bit of a tight fit as you see here, uh, but I did have to stagger them. So one forward, one back, one forward, one back. In order to account for the spools, I might end up coming with a better way to manage the spools where it's somehow hanging off the rack itself so that I can uh, eliminate the need for the extra space there on the sides. And even though I can fit four machines on each shelf, I'm only gonna end up running with three and three for now. I don't wanna overcrowd things. And again, I'm pretty sure I don't have enough power to run eight machines simultaneously without running another dedicated line. And when it comes to power consumption and voltage that's required to run a full print farm on multiple lines, I am definitely not an electrician or even remotely knowledgeable enough for any of that to provide you with proper information. I'm sure there are other YouTubers out there that could help in that space or even on Facebook groups 
For myself, my method is I'm gonna load up machines, power them on, start trying to heat them up, which draws in the most power is when you're preheating your machine. So if anything, you might have to stagger your preheating within your units to maximize the amount of machines that you can run on one line. And the worst case scenario is you're gonna trip the power, which I've definitely done before, especially when trying to use in this print space here slash recording room when I'm printing. And I also am trying to run like a hairdryer or a heat gun and it overloads the system. So I have all six of the Neptune 2 printers set up behind me here and they're already wired and ready to be powered on for us to see if we can actually run all six of these simultaneously here in one setup. I do also wanna point out that on the bottom shelf, we have three of the Neptune 2S printers. In the top left is the Neptune 2, but it has a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. In the center is the dual color Neptune 2, and then on the right is the standard Neptune 2. All right, let's power these on and see how it goes. So now for the big test, let's actually see if I can preheat all of these printers at the same time to 220 on the extruder and 60 on the bed without shorting out the power. I've got all six printers properly heated and up and running. I just had to stagger the heating process for the machines and it's all running off of one outlet for six machines. I just have one large heavy duty power strip running all six printers here in this one space. Now, obviously I did this so I could print some things. So let's fire up some files. Now that we've got the printers up and running, I do want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is none other than Elgu, the makers of the Neptune series of 3D printers. As you can see, I'm a huge fan of this FDM 3D printer, and it's primarily what I use to print everything that I sell over on Etsy. And it's just a wonderful 3D printer that's easy to get up and running. It's very affordable. And that Neptune 2S, the upgraded version of the standard Neptune 2, has lots of nice add-ons that is gonna save you a good bit of money compared to adding on each of those individual components as a standalone. They also make some amazing resin 3D printers like the Elgu Mars 3 and the Elgu Saturn and the upcoming Elgu Jupiter resin 3D printer. If you're interested in more information about any of the products that Elgu sells, I'll have links to those down below. Now that I've got everything up and running, there is a few things that I'm gonna probably look at tweaking here after I'm done making this video. The first of those is installing this wireless adapter into the Neptune 2 printers, which I covered in a previous video. This should allow me to wirelessly send files that I slice and cura directly to the printer. That way I don't have to individually manage each of the machines. However, that said, what's extremely nice about having the exact same printer running in my print farm is that I can slice the file once and then transfer that to each of the individual SD cards. Now, the one exception to that is the Neptune 2 that I have running with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Everything else is running with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The other thing that I'm realizing is I'm gonna need a step stool in this space so that I can more easily access the spools of filament or getting the filament in and out of the printer or just better getting a look at the actual prints as they're processing there. I'm six feet tall and it's still a little bit of a reach for me to get to some of those components of the machines. I could also look at lowering the shelves slightly for this top one and the midsection here just by reducing some of the storage space that I have on the very bottom of the storage rack. The other thing that I'm gonna look at doing is making a modified version of this tool holder that's the universal tool holder file that you can run off and print that's available over on Thingiverse that's compatible with the Neptune 2 printer here and making a version of this file that actually holds onto the frame of the shelving unit here. This way I don't need to necessarily have an individual one on every single printer and I can just have one off to the side here and as I need the tools, I can just reach over, use them and then make sure to put them back. I did also wanna take a moment to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in my Neptune 2 
printer profile options there in Simplify 3D that I use. You'll find those down below, as well as I include all of my resin 3D printer settings in my profiles that I use over in Chitu Box. But let me know down below what you think of my home print farm that I've just now set up. Again, I had everything kind of scattered and across multiple rooms here, and having everything consolidated into one location should really help my workflow in terms of how I'm managing all of the print jobs that I'm typically doing day in and day out. And hopefully one day I'll have a much larger space where I'll be able to run multiple racks of these 3D printers. Turn off the camera, turn off the camera.